This weekend on Top Billing, interior designer Tessa Sonic upcycles old fabrics into on-trend looks. International jewellery success Kirsten Goss toasts a new range and a home renovation to match. Sheldon Tatchell tells the story of his booming barbershop franchise, which began on a stoop in El Dorado Park. Two proud traditional communities become one at the wedding of Muhammad Amir Ali and Kofa Abrams. Ayanda joins Boiti Tulo for a luxury weekend away from being a one-woman TV, hip-hop and style industry. Your presenter this evening, Ryal De Mornay, brings you the best of Mediterranean living from this cliffside garden villa redesigned by Dylan Tomas. Good evening. It's Top Billy Night and welcome to the show, where some designers look at stock which no longer seems to have a place in interiors, Tessa Sonic sees opportunity for upcycling textiles and fabrics, upskilling staff and from the old, creating something all new. As a forward-thinking entrepreneur, Tessa's drive and vision are supported by clients like Heidi Arenstein. You two have been doing business for a long time. What keeps you coming back? So what Tessa's products do to our aesthetic, which is very clean, very minimal, um, almost not there, is they add that spark, and that's what they've always done. It's hard to understand spaces where it's just so clean, like how are we gonna fill it up? So where Katie and I complement each other, she does call me in and say, I've got this job that we're doing, I just need you to pop it. The best example that you can see of how Tessa and I play together is if you look at the cushions in our very strong, deep charcoal kitchen, you'll see that we've got a bit of her craft, a bit of her tie-dye, a bit of her upcycling, and I think that's probably the best example you can see of us really, really um, fitting together very, very well. Fabrics are in Tessa's DNA. Her father was a stock liquidator in the clothing trade. Her mother owned fashion stores, and from them she learned the value in textiles, whatever the trend of the day. You know, we normally tell a story when we design. So I featured Ray in one of my last collections, which was Ray Eames, who is an amazing furniture designer in the 1950s. You'll see all the latest kind of contemporary furniture is taken from a period in history. And the textiles that we put together was about that. It was about lots of Coco Chanel looking textures, um, things that made it feel authentic of the 1950s, but in today's 2000 trend. That's amazing. You come up with a great story, create the look and the textures, you get amazing fabrics, and then you bring it to the market. But your business has progressed from there, right? It really has. Right now the world has gone really big into sustainable design. And what does that really mean? Is taking product that we've sold in the past and making it new. So we almost reinstate it by putting other things to it. So for example, this was a, a product which we had maybe 16, 20 years ago. And this is probably a role that was left behind yeah. because you know you just start keeping stock that doesn't move. First process really is we bleach it, which gives us that look over here. At other times, we didn't bleach it, we just put it straight into a dye bin to get a different process. So what it's enabled my team to do really is to learn how to be colorists. Mm. So for example, this is a tie dye that we did. This is beautiful, yeah, it's amazing. a total transformation. Yeah. And it is, and it's so on trend today because dyeing and tie dyeing is huge. It's huge and it's organic and it's, it makes it feel real. Another idea was where we took the design and we started crafting it. This is a finished cushion and you can see how beautifully it's been crafted. Yeah, I'd love to see how some of these items look in an amazing space. Okay, great, let's go. <laughs> Tessa has called her sustainable design line up for the way it upcycles fabric, teaches new techniques and upskills her team. You know, I love the aesthetic of the whole place. But the thing that stands out for me right now is this carpet. This carpet is an amazing story because the actual carpet itself is designed in the 1870s. 
The fabric that it's backed on is designed in the 1950s. It was 100% hemp cloth. And then it's made into a piece of artwork, really, in the 2000s. So this is really sustainable design where we take a carpet and we reinstate it to today. It is quite bohemian, which is currently what another trend that's happening in, in the world. And it fits so well with what you've done in here. What was the brief of the space? So the space is really quite classic contemporary. I mean, the, the furniture you can see is quite modern contemporary, but the textures that we've used are quite classical fabrics. So instead of making it a cold space, we've actually created a lot of warmth using bright colours and then creating it with cushions of different textures and designs to give you this layering effect. And then bringing it again current with this bohemian feeling which makes the place a little eclectic. And I love how beautifully it flows into the garden area. So the brief here was to take the space and you can see it's looking quite tired, there's nothing mm. happening here. They, so they called me in to say, what can we do to make the space become warm yeah. and bright and happy. So as you can see, um, there's a lot of beautiful foliage, this pink element of mm. the bougainvillea and the garden that's so beautiful. I wanted to bring the space within the structure here and make it quite bohemian. So I'll bring my team to start putting it together. Right. So this again is a sustainable design drug. Yeah. And I wanted to bring the theme through again because it just really is special. I love the way the colors of this just pop. I've brought some of the texture oh, into the cushion. The colors. Yeah, and then we've put a bit of pop of white to make it fresh, bringing again the natural look. Well, let's put that over there. For those who aren't necessarily interior designers, what kind of tips and advice would you have to spruce up their home? My biggest thing is what do you love? Is it colour? Is it texture? What do you love? What furniture items do you love? And once you've got this, the shell of what you love, then it's easy to go put in a cushion here and there or buy a beautiful rug or do things that just make it finished. You've done an incredible job here, but you couldn't have done it without those awesome ladies there. Um, ladies, how does it feel working with Tessa? You know what? I start with Simply, but now, can you believe, I do craft week and I also do tie-dye. I've grown a lot. I started at Tessa Sonic as a PA. And then now I am an office manager. I manage everything from the admin side to fabrics. I make sure that our customers are happy all the time. Regina, you're the head seamstress. How does it feel seeing your work displayed? I feel proud of myself and I feel happy when I saw people that love my things that I'm making. I'm so proud and I'm happy to see that. I've got to say, it makes my heart so warm. Isn't that what business is about, when you can actually help people to get to the next stage? Because at the end of the day, I'm not going to be here forever. Yeah. You know, let me at least let them go on to their next journey with wings to fly. You know, if I've given them that, then I've done my job. By learning to upcycle fabrics, we rediscover their enduring value and our power to reinvent them many times over. With a bit of lateral thinking, an eye for style, and a thought for not filling the world with any more waste, the only way is up. Next up, a new range, new store, and newly renovated house. Jewelry's Wonder Woman, Kirsten Goss, pulls off a hat trick of design. The best of good life. When I get a new look, it's a different haircut, a cool jacket, and maybe some shades to round things off. Now, if you're Kirsten Goss, it starts with a game-changing new jewelry line, which leads to giving a store a complete makeover that inspires all new home decor at her house. The style of her new store in Cape Town brings together Kirsten's Scandinavian heritage with her study and love of fine art. It provides a futuristic theater of design for her ever-evolving work. You're already a well-known South African jewellery designer, popular for your quirkiness and originality. And this year marks 16 years of celebration. Yeah, sweet 16, baby. Very cool. We're very excited to be kind of past those really early teething phases in a business and into a more adult phase where we can do some really big things now with our brand. And I believe you also created a new range to mark this special occasion. So we're definitely ready to do some big things, which includes a whole lifestyle range, which I'm wanting to include cutlery and really cool homeware. And then also with our jewelry being precious metals, a very luxurious range, but that's still cheeky and fashion forward and definitely in tune with what we've always tried to create as a brand, being 
classic with a twist as opposed to your sort of mainstream precious fine jewellery. Titled 16, the new collection is a fresh, fun tribute to the brand's classic pieces. I absolutely love your outfit. It's bold, it makes a statement, and for everybody else that's kind of dressing in a very similar sense, how do you suggest that they pair their outfit with their jewellery? My mantra is always, confidence always triumphs, so if you can actually just walk out feeling like you love the pieces that you're wearing, anything actually works. But certainly there are people that are a bit afraid, so I think looking at lots of pattern, you either want to go pattern on pattern and go really sort of full on, or you can go something really demure and small like one of our cheeky little alternative studs, which say a lot, but they're obviously a lot more understated in tone. Why did you decide to go with this look and feel? The kind of Scandinavian side of me loves all the sort of clean lines, the sort of Stuttgart feel that everything's perfect and then it can be quite wild off that. So it's like a blank canvas with an edge. You can tone it right down to clean white with absolutely nothing in it, but you can equally vamp it up to like powerful LED strobes and colors. And then we've got these beautiful panels in here at the moment, so it's constantly changing. All the display is magnetic, so it allows us to build off and on those panels. And then these beautiful um, cabinets are so clean, they don't detract from anything. And then you can equally be quite crazy. So it's, you know, appeals to my personality. You can kind of go either way. Taking her cue from the new store, Kirsten has just renovated her family's home. The all-white backdrop is like a movie screen where she's projected three decades of travel, art, personal and design inspiration. I can definitely see how you have the same fearlessness for out-of-the-box decor as you do for your jewellery design. Thank you. Well, I guess when you're working on your home and your business at the same pace and the same time, they are going to have a marrying because your sentiments are all one and it's our zeitgeist in the business that I guess drives me or I drive it and therefore it will be in the home as well. You just recently did a rebuild. What was here before and what kind of space were you trying to create for your family? So it was essentially a little 1980s bungalow but it was very dated. We wanted to retain that but we wanted to create a much more spacious environment and obviously with three children and a family and working from home you needed to have quite a lot of room so we've got a single story that flows out onto AstroTurf, which essentially is like having another room altogether because in the evenings it's like a carpet. So all the doors and windows open and everyone can flow outside and move from one side of the house to the other, which just never fails to delight me. What influences did you and your partner bring when designing this home? Basically an assault to the senses. <laughs> We are both fond of the unexpected. I guess we also don't overthink things too much. We're quite keyed into what we like, so it was quite easy to make the decisions together. Clive is very functional, I'm very aesthetic, but we were able to bring in elements of our journey of 30 years of collecting art and loving design and bring it together into a family home environment that we wanted to work for, the greater family um, complement and all the kids and wild parties and things that were gonna happen. It's clear to see that you have an eclectic collection of art and furniture, but what are some of your favorite design styles? I obviously studied fine art, so I was around a lot of really great artists back at Stellenbosch University, and I collected a lot of people that I worked with art, and I was always drawn to the slightly more playful, quirky, cheeky influences. But there are also some quite serious pieces, like when we were in Japan recently, we bought some really beautiful, also an 80s artist, but some really beautiful renditions of the Tokyo and Kyoto stations. And we've also got some mid-century pieces done by proper old Afrikaans painters in the Karoo. So whether it be pop art or high kitsch, or whether it be really quite traditional, the big emphasis for us is that it's been considered and that it was executed beautifully and that we have an overall love for it, be it valuable or invaluable. Among Kirsten's awards is Best Art Director, and she's a natural at composing looks and installations. Into the Mad Hatter's Lair. Wow, it is indeed a Mad Hatter's Lair. <laughs> Loving is. the colours. And a lot of those eccentric pieces are playing through as well. 
Speaking of eccentric features, what's with the Royal Connection? So a very unusual wall, but they all are invitations which we were lucky enough, or I was lucky enough to receive to visit the Queen a couple of times at Buckingham Palace in London. And then when the Royal Princesses came out in the 40s to South Africa, they had a ball thrown for them in Johannesburg. And my grandmother was invited to sit with them at the table. So we've got some really exciting and <laughs> remarkable memories there. Not only are you a celebrated South African designer, but you also celebrate South African design. Quite. I, I'm crazy about South African design. I think there's so much great stuff coming out of this country and I'm very happy to say that I have a lot of beautiful pieces from people that I even know in the industry, like Gregor Jenkin, James Mudge, The New Modernist, Vamp, Hartlander, Sandre Creel, Stockpert, May Rugs. I mean, the list goes on. There really are some beautiful, beautiful people doing things in this country. and crazy about it. You really have created an incredible space for your family. Do you think it's important to expose your children to art and design? I feel that a world without it is, is not really a world that I can relate to. So for our kids to be amongst it and involved in it and part of it is very important. It's also a space that's not very precious. It's just collections and fun, playfulness. Everyone can have an input and put their mark on things. So it keeps it fun and interesting, changes it up a bit. Speaking of kids, it's my oldest's 15th birthday today, and I think it is high time we have a little piece of cake. Kirsten's finest creations are 18-month-old Cosmo, Oscar, age 10, and 15-year-old birthday girl, Farron. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday, dear Farron. Happy birthday to you. Between the new range, store and home renovation, Being Mom remains the most creatively demanding and rewarding of the many hats Kirsten Goss wears. Anytime Kirsten tells her husband, darling, I think we should change a few things, she doesn't mean rearranging the furniture. Coming up, we're hanging with a legend building a barbershop franchise. And love is in every sight and sound of this traditional wedding. The best of good life. I'm no psychologist, but I can tell you never to underestimate the effect of a good or bad haircut. Get a good one and you're ready to conquer the world. Which is why the guy giving the best haircuts in the land has one of our fastest growing brands and an A-list of celebrity clients. What began with owner Sheldon Tatchell giving haircuts outside an Eldorado Park grocery store is today one of the nation's top barber shops. With 10 branches and counting, you still find the boss hands-on with the basics of the business. Okay, what are we getting today? Um, well, you're the legend, you tell me, bro. <laughs> I think, I think like a high top, a high top yeah. maybe with the fade on the sides, with yeah. the line maybe. Yeah, all and right. That will work, no? Yeah, yeah. pull that Mandela yeah. Lumumba style. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Now let's do it, let's do it. Where did the story of the barbershop begin and why the name Legendary? So back in 2011, we started a trend where we went out to the old each home and we like basically served them like on a regular basis. So we used to go out to them like, like just doing it for fun, you understand? Just having that time out with the old people, just getting some wisdom from them. It's something that we enjoy doing. And up until today, we still do it. And so then I just decided, you know what, why not name the barbershop after them? Because they're actually the legends of our community. And that's where the name legends come from. <laughs> wow, that's so cool, man. Yes, yes, yes. So I think like one of the things that I love doing is cutting hair mm. and also giving back to whoever you understand. So it just creates you know, some fulfillment to me as well. You know, you guys are so popular right now. You are going to be one of the top barbershops in the country, if not in Africa. But what is it apart from your popularity that keeps you guys going and keeps the business going strength to strength? I think it's the people, huh? Like each and every barber that works at Legends, they're totally amazing. And the customers, each and every customer's input is very important to us. So I think like we learn as we go, but the people is what always keeps us going. Sheldon has had some customers for 12 years. And among his clients are Cuesta, Casper Njovest, and a certain rapper and producer who's now invested in the franchise. This is fresh, right? 
Yeah. I heard somebody's fresher than me. In this <laughs> Ricky, how you doing, bro? Good, man. How you doing? Good, man. It's, it's Sheldon. I'm just doing yeah. the most, man. <laughs> yeah, I see you doing your thing. You know, you're looking good. You're looking good. <laughs> We're trying to get there, bro. Beautiful beard status. <laughs> <laughs> too nice, too I'll give you the card, I'll give yeah. you the beer card. <laughs> Why did you choose Sheldon as your trusted barber and what keeps you coming back? Oh, I actually got put on to Sheldon by a few friends of mine, uh, word of mouth. I'm, I, all great things happen by word of mouth, so a few friends of mine told me about this guy who was cutting hair in the south and he was pretty much the best and uh, they said you guys should link up. And I called Sheldon I said, Sheldon can you do something special to my hair? And he said yes and ever since then we've been together. You're now the proud owner of this very barber shop. What sparked the genius idea to buy into the franchise? I mean, amazing. I was watching Sheldon just build store after store after store. And uh, he's just got a super drive to take the Legends brand and put it everywhere in South Africa. And uh, it's sort of a vision that I shared with him. So when I had the opportunity to jump into business with him on this store here, I had to definitely take it because I just know the great work that they do and everybody deserves a legendary cut. There are many barbershops around. What makes this one unique? The unique thing about this barbershop is that we're not trying to be anything that we're not used to. We're not trying to be anything that we didn't grow up on. We bring the barbershop culture with the new wave of the new hairstyle culture together. So this is really a home. It's a barbershop, but first and foremost, it's a home for people to come and join. Nah, man, that's the vibe, bro. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. I feel like I'm looking too fresh, Sheldon. We should go somewhere, bro. Yo, 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 yo. When I'm around, let yeah. me say you're too fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Watching every step of Sheldon's journey has been his mother-in-law, Ogretta Moody, and more recently, his daughter, Cassidy. Ma, Sheldon has had an incredible journey. How do you feel about his success? Uh, I just feel proud of Sheldon. <laughs> you know, he's always an, an ambitious person and he goes for what he wants and he doesn't compromise. Every time he just amazes me because he is a person really that goes after what he wants. Cassie, what do you love most about your dad? I love my dad because he's cool and he brings me toys and it's lovely and he helps me with my homework. He takes me to the playground and he fetches me at school. Sheldon, we know you as the legendary barber, but you're also a family man. How do you manage to balance the two? There's a reason I work so hard, because I mean, like, at the end of the day, I need to spend some time with people that mean the most to me. Family is the one thing that keeps me going. Without them, I wouldn't be the person I am today. Because I mean, like, growing up, it was quite tough for me, you understand, because like I never actually had these type of sessions with my father, you understand? And I would want to be that dad that's basically be involved in the lives. So I think like that's one of the most important things that we must in, in our generation, not even like father figures that's there. And I want to be that father that's just, just a role model to the kids. Sheldon, you're a true inspiration to so many people and the legendary barbershop lives up to its hype. We could say that you're actually at the top, but where to from here? So in the start, I made a goal for myself uh, to, to open five stores in five years. Nobody believed me. My goal right now is to, to expand and to serve people around South Africa, around Africa with about 200 stores by 2030. So that's the goal. Yes, it's nothing impossible. I think like once you put your mind to it, you can basically achieve anything, you understand? So yeah. Thank you for an awesome day and the fresh cut. Sheldon does it by respecting every client, young and old, men and women, everyday citizens and celebs alike. Next, two proud traditional communities from Durban and Cape Town come together in love. The marriage of Muhammad Amir Ali to Kotha Abrams adds to the wealth of diverse wedding cultures we've been invited to celebrate. So let's make the circle bigger. On his visits to the Cape, Durban restaurant entrepreneur Amir met law student and transport business director Kotha through family. They began dating last year. Amir's father flew down to propose marriage, and it was clear what a good match the couple are. This part of the wedding is called the nikah, and the second part is the reception. For the first part, the nikah, it's tradition to usually wear something white, like a white dress. The afternoon, I will change it up. It's a very big day for me on this day, something that I waited for quite a while, and I have the most beautiful bride with me. 
While Amir is passionate about motorsport, once he met Kotha, their friendship became the center of both their worlds. Wedding planning was delegated to mother of the bride, Tasneem Abrams, and the sisters-in-law from both sides. This wedding was planned in a mere three weeks, two weeks of which were in Saudi Arabia, so you could imagine. It was absolutely chaotic. It was all worth it just to see a smile. My special message is love and respect each other. And through that, the knots which tie your hearts together will strengthen every day. I would want them to live a nice and decent, prosperous Islamic way of life. And their kids must be exactly the same as they have grown up, which we have set an example to them. As the groom got himself together, he had no idea of the vision awaiting him. So the look we're going for today is a bold lip, a very subtle eye, gold on the eyelids, and very natural looking skin. What inspired me with the gown was the strong personality and she wanted to go more for the vintage look. We went for the ivory, matching her skin color. And then we decided to go pearls, just to keep the vintage look and a little bit of diamonds, just to give the sparkle, because after all, diamonds are a girl's best friend. With fresh flowers throughout, Mariam Barron had laid on a garden of a theme. We've made the day exceptionally special for Amir and Kotha's wedding here today, with an array of floral arrangements on the ceiling, to the stage, onto the tables. We have the three-dimensional linens in cream, the full sequence rose gold tablecloth and the rose gold and gold colours and textures together. She said to, to surprise her with whatever I decided and you know I, I thought of her dress and I wanted something plain but with sparkle and a little bit of elegance. Anyone who's seen the couple together is positive about their future, like Amir's sister, Fadia. Amir and Kothar are very special together. I wish them all the best in the future and they're both very lucky to have each other as a couple and to go forward in life and one day to have kids. The kids will be lucky to have them as parents. They have a really, really good chemistry. Like you can see it when they stare at each other, when they look at each other's eyes. You can see how much they love each other. In respect to their tradition, custom dictated how events played out. The tradition is that the groom would send his family to come and collect his bride and we would take her home. This is traditional Cape Malay dressage that we have done over the years. The highlight for my day was seeing him for the first time this morning. Yes, I think that was my highlight as well, especially the nikah part in the morning. It was something different. It's more than only a special day for them, but for all of us. And my wish is that the rest of their lives should be as beautiful as this day. And for the rest of our lives, we will be as happy as we are today for the two of them. Once Kotha graduates, Muhammad Abir's business will move to the Cape and they'll take it from there. Muhammad Kothar, years wishing you the best of the good life, the rest of your days, and may those days be many. Any interview with Boity Tulo is worth taking a whole weekend to enjoy. So that's just what we'll do next on a Lux Seaside Getaway. The best of the good life. With summer still months away, Boiti and Ayanda decided it's just not reasonable waiting this long for a holiday. So they're starting their own spring break tradition, heading south and making as epic a vacation as they can of one weekend. Getaways are as precious as diamonds to Boiti, whose life as a presenter, actress, fitness icon, businesswoman and rapper is a 24-7 occupation. Escaping to Cape Town and the renowned Southern Sun Cullinan Hotel put all other career commitments on pause so she could focus on having a good time relaxing with Ayanda. In a hotel perfectly situated between the city and the waterfront, 
General Manager Jacques Mulman had taken care of all arrangements. Oh wow, Jacques, this room is absolutely exquisite. What can guests expect from the Cullinan Hotel? I think what they can expect is classically styled opulent bedrooms and what makes this hotel really successful is the fact that we can cater from business traveler to a family on holiday. I think what makes this hotel really famous in Cape Town is the pool deck. Pool heated so it helps in winter and summer but any day is good. If the sun's shining that's the day to be out on the pool deck. Then there's Peachtree restaurant where we serve Sunday lunches, breakfast and dinners. So we also have a spa down on the pool deck. Manguanani Spa, fantastic. Absolutely the right place to go to if you want to really, really relax. Anything a guest would like at this hotel, we can do. Amazing. Well, thank you, Jacques. But you mentioned something about a spa. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready for that. I'm so ready. <laughs> Jacques, we're going to leave you and go thank and you. enjoy the massages. <laughs> Since partnering with a leading brand to create limited edition fragrances, Voity has learned a lot about the beauty industry. But this trip was strictly pleasure, not business. Hi ladies, how are you? <laughs> good, thank you. I'm also good. My name is Tuli. I'm the branch manager and you're welcome to Manganani the Kalinen. For today, you'll be having your feet massage. I'll take you upstairs. My lab the therapists are ready for you. Can you please follow me? Yes! <laughs> Every trip inside our borders is a chance to support the tens of thousands of skilled young people working in our tourism industry, like therapists Viwe Kei and Anita Jijingubo. So ladies, what do you have planned for us today? Today we're going to do our African Royal Foot Massage. We're going to massage your feet from your toes into your heels. I know you ladies are very hardworking. I know you're going to enjoy this. Within an hour of landing at the airport, Boiti felt this was one of her best decisions all year. Viwe, I am enjoying this technique so much. What are the benefits of this massage? The benefit of the massage is to calm your spirit, soothe your soul and relax your body and simply distress. And speaking about distressing, you lead such a busy life. How do you normally just take time out to relax? Well, actually, the spa is number one, top of the list, in terms of um, ways for me to de-stress and to relax, but also meditation and gym, actually. You know, I think people wouldn't think that going to the gym and working a sweat is a way to de-stress, but for me, gymming definitely soothes me and calms me down. People wouldn't actually think so. I absolutely love the gym, just to just take time out and relax. But um, you work out a sweat, but you feel so rejuvenated afterwards. Exactly. And you, how do you de-stress, actually? <sighs> I'm a couch potato. I love being at home, watching a good movie with my puppy, Sainty. Yes, and uh, yeah, there's no one way to relax. I think you listen to your soul, you listen to your body, what it needs. It can be a lunch with friends on one day, it can be a massage, it can be reading a book. Um, traveling is good food for the soul. So I just think I'm very good at listening to my body. When I need time out, I need to be away. I agree to that, yeah. A sparkling rosé awaited in a private dining room surrounded by premier export wines. The ladies' visit was perfectly timed to coincide with Chef Lindsay Venn moving on from winter dishes to a fresh offering of the Cape's finest produce. Chef, I understand that you've introduced a new menu. Yeah, we've launched our new summer menu. A lot of innovative ideas, so we've been working all through winter on some new fresh flavors that is coming in. We've looked at different profiles that are happening around globally, seasonal availability also. So yeah, sustainability also definitely playing a key part in what we do here at Sokho San at the Kalinen. And in all Sokho San properties, we work hard basically on how we're going to keep sustainability going, fresh produce, and how we can basically help the planet also. Which meant locally sourced lamb rack with baby corn, dehydrated olives, cherry tomatoes, and asparagus with lamb jus. Salmon with asparagus, pea puree, grapefruit, and orange foam. Boise, how are you finding your food? The food is absolutely incredible. The meat is so succulent and juicy, exactly as the chef said. So I'm very impressed. And I will admit that I'm not the biggest fan of veggies. What? But I know. <laughs> Don't judge me, I, I eat them because I have to, not yeah. because I thoroughly enjoy them, but these are as fresh as the chef said they would be, and I'm 
I'm so happy. Do you know what I can't wait for? What? Tomorrow. Yay. I'm taking you on a picnic and some drinks. That evening's fair was so good, the girls couldn't wait to spend their next day at the oldest wine-producing farm in South Africa, where the spring in Boiti's step suggested her move into music and the release of her second single, Bakai, are taking her places. Well, it is such a beautiful day in Cape Town and I'm sure it's one of the many beautiful destinations you've been to. What are some of the most memorable? Um, Cape Town definitely is top of, you know, um, but for me, my favorite definitely has to be my trip in Italy. I can't even choose one specific place, but everywhere I went in Italy, Venice, Milan, Florence, Rome, it was just, it's a dream, it really is. Your music is also something that's been making you travel quite a bit within the country. How's that going? The music has been phenomenal, honestly, it's been like, I've never felt more at home in terms of my career and it feels like throughout my, my journey in the, in the entertainment industry I, I feel like I've been getting prepared for such a time as this. Um, it just feels like it's what I've been meant to be doing this entire time and I could not be happier. And you also chose hip hop which is quite a difficult genre, very male dominated. How has the reception been so far? The reception has been beyond what I could have ever asked for. I feel like everyone is on my side and it's, it's, it's beyond what I could have prayed for. Yeah, there's nothing more reassuring and reaffirming than people wanting more music from you because that means then obviously they're enjoying what you're giving them. And yeah, everything has just been so good. The reception has been so motivating. One of Africa's top 30 creatives under 30, Boiti's high-flying lifestyle comes from her demanding acting, presenting, music and fashion careers. So when she does take a break, her 3 million Instagram followers tend to cheer as she sips on a Vernon Peterson cocktail. Okay, so we'll be doing some white wine mojitos. It's basically just a spin of the classic. Yeah. Um, instead of using rum, I use uh, gin, and then I just top it up with a nice Sauvignon Blanc. Nice. Okay, but you ladies be doing all the work. It's not, you can't just drink. You need oh, to no! Work. So I'm gonna cut your limes for you, actually. Okay, at least. <laughs> <laughs> to limes, fresh mint and mint syrup, add crushed ice, gin, and round it off with a Sauvignon Blanc. Well, oh, cheers to a beautiful afternoon. Yeah, Thank cheers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Berlin. <laughs> oh, very nice. That very is refreshing. very good. Wow. Mm. The extra wine works, to be quite mm. honest. <laughs> Sunset is already later, which is the surest sign that summer's on the way. And with Cape Town's dams above 80% full, the city's hoping for a bumper tourist season. So it's the final day in Cape Town. Yeah. The VNA waterfront is always buzzing. I love the ambience and Absolutely. the energy. Yeah. And what better way to end off our beautiful Cape Town trip with the Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been, I'm so excited. I know. <laughs> Boiti was only too happy for someone else to be capturing the moment, leaving her and Ianda to focus on everything you can see from the Cape Wheel a 360-degree view of the city from 40 metres above the harbour. All right, up, up and away! I know! The uh, v &A waterfront so is always pretty. such a vibe for me because the people are just amazing, the music and the ambience. Yeah. The many variations of what you can do. Absolutely. We are on a Ferris wheel. Ferris wheel, water, yeah. shopping, incredible restaurant. It's just, it's fantastic. And speaking about water, you know mm -hmm. we're not ending it here, right? <laughs> Where else as are we going? As fun and beautiful as the views are yes. of Cape Town from the Ferris wheel, we are still going to explore the great sea of Cape Town. <laughs> I love that. I love the sea. So does this luxury catamaran. A three-hour cruise around the Atlantic seaboard was just the ticket to refresh Boiti for the last few work months of the year. What are your hopes for 2020? My wishes for 2020 definitely is growth, um, becoming more comfortable in my music journey, um, exploring more of the world through my music, and yeah man, more success, love, friendship, all the cheesy stuff, but truly the things that make us who we are at the end of the day, that's what I really hope for, but yeah, more than anything, I really hope that my music career takes me to the world. To the world! Yes. <laughs> 
she's got herself halfway there already. Okay, ladies, in the spirit of spring break, finish these classic lyrics for us. If we took a holiday, took some time to celebrate, just one day out of life, it would be... <laughs> Join the party on hashtag top billing and sing it. Coming up, interior designer Dylan Tomas brings rustic elegance inside and out with his take on breezy Mediterranean style. We bring you a fascinating new toppling location each week. Now tonight, we change it up a little and return to a home we've seen before, only this time with a totally new perspective from interior designer Dylan Tomaj. With its confident black and white shuttered exterior, this could easily be a villa along the Spanish or Italian coast, until you notice the giant Cape Granite boulder it's built against then the rustic but elegant clumpy brick paving and the signature style of Dylan's work. I've heard a lot has changed, but I'm so glad to see that you've kept the Mediterranean feel. One of the things that I really love about the Mediterranean feel was keeping the, the originality of the pieces. So each piece in the home tells a story from the tiles that we've used, the flooring, the, the finishes, the custom design lighting, the mirrors, everything that we've really looked at has a story behind it, which was really important for myself and the homeowner. Speaking of stories, I believe this house has a very rich history. So the property itself is really rich in history. The property dates back to the 18th century where there used to be a cottage with a cave behind it. And the guy who used to work in the cave used to make shoes called Schoonmaker's Cave. And he used to make them for the slaves in the 18th century. And we've actually kept the original photograph of the original house, which is behind you, Jay. And you can see beautiful tram lines that used to run through this road that we have out front here. The floors were originally going to be cement screed until the client decided they'd rather go with dark brick flooring. It's the kind of in-the-moment decision which comes from living in the place as the renovation evolves. The house looks so different, so much has changed. So Jed, I don't know if you remember, this used to be the dining room. And what I love what we've done here is we've actually converted this into the living room where you get to enjoy the sunsets here, which are really beautiful. And this whole space has just become one big lifestyle, which is far more suited to the house. It feels much lighter in here. How did you achieve that? So the first thing we did was we got rid of all the wallpaper and painted the walls white. And what that does is it lets the light reflect from the outside onto the walls, which actually makes it feel a lot brighter. And we've also used a lot more natural tones, which also just brings the space alive in a really beautiful way. You've done a stunning job with the kitchen. I particularly love this marble. So this marble has a beautiful story behind it. We really searched high and low to find this particular stone. What I love about it is the femininity that comes with it. But to get the stone in the house, it was quite a tricky situation because we had to crane it in and everyone was worried about it breaking, so we had to cut it up into pieces and that's where we got this beautiful inlay that we've done here. So the funny story about this is no red wine is allowed to be drunk at this table unless you put your red wine glass on the blue inlay that we've custom made, which is really beautiful because the stone is so porous. So every time we sit here and have dinners or sushi, we really get to enjoy the space and laugh about the fact that the stone is so porous. One of my favorite things is this brick floor that really pops and runs throughout. I love the black brick and the beautiful thing about it was it was only decided on halfway through the project and what it's done is it's really brought the space alive because you have the contrast with the dark floors and the light base that you have on top. But what we've also done is we've carried it out throughout the house where it has this indoor outdoor feel. So if you open up all the doors, this whole living space becomes a really big space, especially for summer when you enjoy the sunsets here. The black of the floors is echoed in aluminium shutters, combining with a gold, white and black in the kitchen for a hint of North African style. While around the corner, light wood, desert sand and burnished orange colours welcome the sunrise every morning. Jed, I don't know if you remember, this used to be the wine bar. Now we've converted into this beautiful breakfast nook, which I think is really lovely to start your day, have a cup of coffee and just really take life in. We found this man who lives out in Hermanus and he makes these beautiful handmade towels. So each towel here is individually made, hand painted and crafted differently to actually give you that uniqueness and tactility which is really true to the house and the aesthetic that we've gone for. I think this is the perfect place to start your day. Once the sun sets, interest moves to the centre of the house where the timber is more red. Light bounces off the reflective decor and the bollard-like cushions are a tribute to the boulder outside. 
This used to be the TV room, and we converted it into the dining room because it has the, the least amount of sun during the day, so it wasn't a space that you'd naturally gravitate to during the day. So by converting this to the dining room, it really brings it to life, especially at night where we can open these beautiful doors, and this whole living space comes together in a really unique way, which allows people to really enjoy a good dinner party. How would you describe the color palette that you've gone with? So it's a lot more tactile and a lot more neutral, which I think was really important. And we played with the same tones, which I thought was quite important, especially playing with woods. The beautiful detail that we put on the steps, which is a gold metal finish, which I think is really unique, which reflects the light again. The tiles that we got from Italy, which also just bring in that other level. And all the, the natural materials, like the linens on the chairs and the couches here, which I think is really important to bring a space to life and really accentuate a color palette. The black and light chandelier keeps the room modern contemporary, while the gold accented stairs elevate the style to what you find in the bedrooms. Dylan, a bedroom overlooking the ocean. I don't think I could ever get tired of this. It's incredible, right, Jade? Yeah. Well, what was your aim for this space? So we wanted to keep the feature the ocean and the views. So that was one of our big focuses. And the other thing is we wanted to keep the Mediterranean feel. So we've introduced the green slate, which I think is really lovely and unique, especially to this type of home. We also went with a lot more luxe feel. So it's, we've got organic linens and the drapes on the curtains, which are really lovely. And then just the handmade elements on the tiles on the, the headboard, which just gives it that personalized feel, which I think is really important. The tones are also very subtle, which I think gives it that calming feel. Yeah, it is. And I think that's the whole point, was to look at the colors and say, what colors make you feel really tranquil and at peace, especially when you're spending eight hours at night in bed. And I think the gray that we've chosen is really good. It is a very common color, and it also just complements the ocean. If the green slate picks up the Atlantic, the gold lamps catch the evening sun. And then there's this. Dylan, this is amazing. The first thing that catches my eye is the shower. It's almost like it's outside. It's incredible. And I love this room. And I think this is the perfect closet. And the shower, we've actually put in a rainfall shower. So when you stand in the shower and you only have the view of Lion's Head, which is brilliant. You know, if you wanted to make girls hurry up when getting ready, this was not the way to do it. <laughs> I understand that. I do understand that. I really do understand that. <laughs> <laughs> the idea was for a walk-in closet right out of the movie Sex and the City with subtle gold detailing, giving it that Fifth Avenue boutique style. So Jay, this is the TV room, which used to be the pool room. We have a bit of an old world feel, which still lends itself to that Mediterranean feel with classic pieces with, mixed with a bit of contemporary. Looking out at this gorgeous patio surrounded by the mountain, it's almost like you are in your own little world here. That's exactly what we wanted to achieve. We wanted the space to speak to each other, which I think is really important, with a little bit of a sneaky bar next to you over there. So when you're having those great dinner parties outside or lunch parties, it really lends itself to a space that people can come in and relax and just really enjoy the view, which is the foot of Lion's Head and this beautiful boulder behind me. The master stroke outside was replacing a wooden deck with herringbone clumpy bricks. This garden really is something special. Jay, that's exactly what we wanted to achieve. We wanted to give this Mediterranean feel as if you were in Greece or Seaches, but you're not. You're at the foot of Lion's Head, overlooking Cape Town's best beaches, and it was really important for us to create a very structured garden. So we painted in between the rocks the white detailing, which just gives you this really authentic feel as if you were in the Mediterranean, which is teamed up with the beautiful Dutch bricks as well, which is all around the garden, and especially here under the pergola. This patio has had a complete facelift which was really important. We wanted the, this very alfresco type dining style, which we did this built-in seating, which really lends itself to a beautiful afternoon lunch here or early dinner with this beautiful roof that is weatherproof, which I think is really important, especially in Cape Town, because you never know where it's going to rain. What advice would you give homeowners who want to renovate an aging house? So I think the really important thing to do is to look at the structure of the house, so the bones, and then choose great flooring, which I think is really important because with good flooring you can do anything. And again, a white wall for me goes a long way. And then also looking at the furniture pieces and the aesthetic that you want to achieve. Try and keep it really simple, don't overcomplicate it, and just look at the way you live in the house. Dylan, it's been wonderful catching up and it's been fantastic to see the transformation of this home. It was great welcoming you back, Jade, and I'm so glad that you got to see what we've done to this beautiful and extraordinary home. For anyone passing by, the house has come to be appreciated just as much as the scenery. Other shows say, don't try this at home. We say, 
go right ahead and send us the pictures. If Dylan's given you fresh ideas on redoing your interiors, join the design party on hashtag top billing and let's be seeing it. Until next weekend, good night South Africa and God bless. Join us again next week for the Thriller in Manila as Dr. Fezem Kize faces a hundred contenders for the title of Mr. World. We get to the bottom of why a home got turned on its head at the Upside Down House. And Caribbean model Marla Bryan brings the best Creole cooking back home to Africa.